One arm out straight and one arm slightly bent. That's about the length that you need. Then cut string. Now you'll notice that the trusty needle has got a little eyelet in it and you thread the string through that eyelet. Right, now turn in your chicken if you're right handed, you do it this way. If you're left handed, you do it that way. For this intense of purposes. Take the legs and pull the legs as far forward as you possibly can. And you've got this little V here that's forward. And you take your trusting needle and you push it through the chicken. So you go actually underneath the carcass. You're not actually going through any bone. Right? You're, nor any of the meat. You're going underneath the bone. Pull it through and leave a little bit of string on this side. Put the legs back, turn it over. Now what we need to do now <coughs> is go through the hand, the forearm, and then the neck, so that you're actually tying this together. So it holds its shape. So, you go between the two bones. Why don't you go over there, Matt, so you can see it from the right side? No, so I'll show it here. Then you come through the winglet. Now we go through the skin, actually through the neck, and you pick up the skin again. So that, and then you mirror on this side, that side. So again, you go through the hand between the bones, between the two bones in the winglet, and pull it through. Now, you've now come through to where you were. And what we do is this. We turn it on its side. Now where we tie it up, you always go up under once, under twice. And then we pull that as tight as you possibly can. The reason you do twice is it holds. If you only do it once, it'll slip back. And then you cut it off. Now that string stays the same no matter what size piece of poultry you're doing, whether it be chicken, turkey, duck, goose, little, little quail or guinea fowl. So that one stays the same. And then straight away what it's done is plump the breast up so it actually presents it in such a nice shape. A bit like that, Rosie, yeah. Okay. Now what we do, take your and starting the same side as this nut, knot, you've got your carcass. You actually go through, there's a little hole in the carcass that you can push through, just above it. Right? Through there. And what we do now is come through, and what you want to do is on the leg, you've got a tendon that runs across the back of the tendon, the leg here. So what we do is we actually put the trussing needle through, uh, over the bone but underneath the tendon. Pull the, the skin back, push the trussing needle through the skin and then mirror it on the other side. And then pull it through. This time actually take the string off the trussing needle. And again, tight round twice and tight off. And then just trim off your, your string. You've now got your chicken trust for roasting. Isn't that, there's another way of doing it, isn't it, where we did last time? Where yep. you just a one, a one string method, yes, Rose, yeah. there is. But this is what you would do if you've got a trussing needle. If you haven't got a trussing needle, then yes, you could use the one string method. It's not as good, but it will suffice. Right. When you roast the chicken, it always starts off on its side like that for approximately 20 minutes and then it's turned that way for 20 minutes it then turned that way for 20 minutes and to finish it off it goes that way up in your roasting tray now when it's cooked when it comes out of the oven now how would you tell how do you think you'd tell whether it's cooked two ways right? 
right? If the juices that come out are red, it's not cooked. What you would do is this. You'd actually put your truss, your roasting fork in there, hold the chicken up that way, and look at the juices that run out into your tray. If there's blood running out, it's not cooked. The other way is that you would use a temperature probe and you'd go into the thigh here, because this is the thickest part of the chicken, and that's where you test. So you go into there. And when it's cooked and you bring it out, this has to rest. And the way to rest it is actually that way up. Probably most of your, your mums and that when they rest it at home, it comes out and it stays that way up. So what, what happens if you stand it up that way? All the juices will run out of the breast and it will be dry. If you turn it over that way, all the juices run into the breast and it will stay nicer and moist. So it comes out and it goes onto the tray like that when it's cooked. It's raw, you stand them up like that. Okay. So it's, if you think about it, it's 20 minutes that side, 20 minutes that side, onto there, 20 minutes, and then just to finish off, probably about another 10 minutes. And then that should be the roast chicken. So that's how you do it. Okay.